I would like to thank Wider for having me back. This is like homecoming for me after seven years that I left uh, Helsinki. And also it's a great honor to be in this session, particularly because I'm not an expert. Second, because uh, the people that have done the, ground, uh, the groundbreaking work on this are in this room. And also because when I went to school, I read Alan and Elizabeth papers, especially the contribution on the uh, sustainable development plans of my own country, the Dominican Republic. So it's a, it's a great honor to be here. So I took the word of Alan and also the work of Augustine Fosso, who invited me very seriously to focus on policy issues. I mean, I don't want to reformulate the papers. They were very well presented. They are very well laid out uh, the presentation. So what I'm going to do is to give some background, especially related to, to, to policy. And this is data that comes from the UN, from the World Bank, and, and, and the work that some of the authors here have done. So basically, I mean, if you look around uh, what, uh, what is the status about uh, the formality or informality or registration or not of, of, of land, we see that around 70% of land in developing countries is unregistered, leaving people and citizens more vulnerable to displacement. Also, the issue of inequality was raised uh, by, by some of the presentations, especially gender disparities, that globally uh, around over 30% of farms are held by women compared with over 60% uh, for men. And also the issue about uh, development, peace, prosperity, and security. Like if we look at uh, the experience of African countries, land issues have played a major role in conflicts in Africa, particularly since 1990. So the issue of land security and, and, and regulation uh, touches upon different aspects of development economics. Then what about poverty? I mean, uh, and then using my UN hat, uh, and, and also, I mean, some of the work that, that Alan has done for, for FAO and also, or also Elizabeth, I mean, if we look at the, what is the composition of poverty from the MDGs war, and now that we are in the post-2015 development agenda, the situation is that the poor remain largely rural and dependent on agriculture. So the issue of land security is very important, particularly for, for Sub-Saharan Africa. Then also some of the work that we have done in the UN Commission for the status of women, we see that uh, in about over 160 countries that, was, uh, that were studied, only 37 had a specific laws granting equal rights for women and men to own, use, and control land. So the issue of, uh, of gender inequality still manifests itself importantly. And, um, and another issue is the issue of migration that has implications not only for employment and labor relocation, but also the, the issue of high population growth and population dividends, especially in the African continent. So there are different areas of development that are related to, to the topics discussed here today. Uh, I mean, I don't want here to preach to the converted, especially because the specialists are here in the room, but when I was given the task, I just went back to read some of the work that, that has been done by Wider and some of the, the, the surveys. And I mean, uh, if we think about the future development and research agenda, there are some issues that uh, still we have to go back to. And first of all, I mean, we know that property rights are not sojourners given, they evolve over time, and they are driven by economic and political forces. And we saw it today in the case of Africa, Vietnam, and, and, and Mexico. So uh, the, the papers discussed here today are of great importance. I um, mean, the work of Roderick and also the work cited by Martin Ravallion and co-authors, the issues of the egalitarian access and the egalitarian consequences uh, are also very important. And, uh, but there are some questions related to the development process that also I think uh, going forward we have to, to revisit and, and some of the papers here have done a, a good work on that. And it's, um, I mean, what are the different ramifications and implications of organizing rural economic activities? Uh, uh, the first one is the risk that land will be expropriated has implications for investment and, and then uh, other implications for pro productivity and so on. The second issue is about the, the, the impact, I mean, how the, that it reduces the ability of borrowers to pledge land as collaterals and then also restrict uh, uh, credit, uh, affect credit constraints. Uh, the issue of um, how this uh, can affect or inhibit land transactions, especially 
uh, that the potential gains from trade are lost. And I think this is an area where more work could be done about the relationship between uh, land and property rights and the trade aspects. And uh, Klaus mentioned that today on, on, on his presentation. And, and finally, the issue of how scarce resources like labor may be devoted to protecting insecure rights over plots. So these are issues like all, uh, they've been hanging around for some time in the, in the literature, but I think are important in the context of what was discussed today. So I just have general remarks, as I said. Um, I mean, I received the presentations. I enjoy very much reading them. Uh, as we saw, they look at different aspects of land security, and, uh, and the findings have important implications for development and policy. Later, I'm going to, to, to put forward some areas that I think uh, is not a Christmas shopping list, but some areas that I think uh, thinking about a development agenda can be, can be important. Um, as we saw, the three papers use the best available data. Uh, they have very well-defined identification and empirical strategies. They account for household and other time invariant fixed effects to, uncontro to control for unobserved characteristics and so on. So there is, um, I mean, uh, a good foundation there. And, and, and also, I mean, what is important uh, is also what other countries and regions can learn from these experiences. So like, for example, the Latin America, we have many countries that have the same colonial origins and the same type of land reforms that Mexico has. So it's like, what can we learn from, from Mexico? And also the case of uh, what other countries can learn from Rwanda, Ethiopia, uh, Zambia, and so on, and Vietnam is the, poster child of reform uh, uh, in, the, in the region. So what other least developed countries in the region can learn from, from, from Vietnam? That could be a very well articulated, very, 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 ni very nice work. Uh, what I found also very, very important is that the, the three presentations highlighted the political implications, particularly the, the, influ the influence of local power uh, or elites, and also the issue of corruption. And, and how that can uh, relate to, to enhance property, property rights. Then, I mean, what are the questions like reading the papers and just, uh, I don't want to sound repetitive, but what questions um, came to my mind and, and thinking uh, on, future, on future development on, based on, the, on this work that has been presented. I mean, uh, again, the issue of uh, the, the role of, uh, of the government as a source of land insecurity in Vietnam was very, uh, I think it's one of, it's a very powerful message coming from the work of uh, Thomas and, and, and Finn Tarp and, and also the, 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 the issue of the political consequences in Mexico. But then uh, like going forward and also from the African experience, what are the persistent challenges for property and land rights? And one, uh, what can, what type of innovations can be uh, put forward, not only formal, but also um, informal. Uh, also the issue, what is the optimal type of ownership structure, like individual vis-a-vis -vis societal uh, property rights? Then um, what about the impacts and spillovers on non-rural, non-farming activities? And I think this is also an area where the Mexico war can, can guide us uh, a little bit. I mean, what are, what are the impact for uh, non-farming rural development? Our ex-colleague from, from UNCTA, Luke Christensen, has done also some important work on this area and can be also very useful for least developed countries. And also, uh, what are the interactions with other policy areas? And I think uh, one of the, uh, I think it was uh, Elizabeth at the end that mentioned, and, and, and also Klaus, the issue of the interaction between political reform and economic reform, and how this goes hand, hand in hand, and how this can, this can affect uh, development prospects in the, in the, in the presence of uh, insecure land and property rights. Then here comes my Christmas list, and uh, I want to, I will try to be brief, but uh, as I said, it comes from my reading of, of the presentations, and I think issues that were touched by the presentation, but also that could be taken, taken forward. And the first is the impact on structural transformation. As I said, no, looking not only at um, the development of uh, agricultural land, but also non-farm uh, and non-agrarian sector. The second issue, and uh, is the, uh, looking at the work of Alan Elizabeth, not only previous work, but also the wider special issue in, in uh, 
the Journal of Development Economics, the, um, the issue of uh, food prices and the issue of food security is also very important. Uh, the impact of efficiency in terms of production and, and as I said, food security. And then I, uh, I want to go back to the issue of gender implications and again, uh, why there has done some important work and uh, uh, Fintarp with uh, Carol Newman and others and also um, as, as I cited my colleague, my ex-colleague Christian Christensen now at, back at the World Bank and also um, Klaus has done some work for, for Africa on that. So it's like, what are the different gender dimensions, not only related to tenure uh, or non-tenure, but the issues like um, uh, in the case of, of Rwanda, what, what they show that, yes, there were improved access for women uh, in terms of rights, but only for legally married women. And uh, so the, some of the, these laws have, the, these regulations have been modified or they are trying to modify, but in some countries still there is this uh, difference. And also, uh, well, the, issue of bargaining power or uh, empowering women, whether it has a impact on efficiency or not. And uh, TARP and others show that in the case of, um, I mean, using household data, that there were no efficiency losses because women had improved uh, bargaining power. So it was a, a positive outcome. But then there is the, as I mentioned before, the non-farming economy. And here, the, that's where you see also more inequality. And for example, in the case of non-farm enterprises, they, according to some work, they, they seem to be less productive when they are operated by, by women and they are located in rural areas. So there are many issues related to that that I, I don't have time to unfold now, but I think it will be important to look at that as well. Then the issue of human capital accumulation and employment. And then, as I mentioned before, institutional innovations beyond titling. And, 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 and this brings me to the issue of, I mean, what, what can be done? And I came across by the, the work of uh, Ernest and Christopher Udry, and, and, and the, where they propose a decentralized private creation of property rights, for example, via the creation uh, of a land bank uh, using the case of, of Ghana. So here, this will be like, Formal institutions will take deposits uh, from landowners and then uh, lands will lease out land to commercial farmers and developers. So this will be like a sort of mixed approach uh, to, to credit uh, granting and, and, and managing. I mean, this is only one of many, many permutations that can be <laughs> out there. And, uh, and again, the, the work of uh, of uh, Klaus and, and, and others here have some also interesting things to say about that. I will stop here and, and, and well, there are other issues there that I, um, I also thought uh, will be important, uh, especially looking more at the trade dimensions in the tradable and non-tradable sectors and different type of crops. And, and the issue of foreign direct investment, um, I don't know how much work is, uh, is, uh, is there out there about this, but I think it will be interesting to, to also to consider. And finally, just I joined the, the crowd crying for more data and better, better data, and I don't know if wider can help with this. And, with this, I'll stop and thank you very much.